All right, everybody, welcome back. It's the last week of tying how to tie the knots. Now, I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna call this series, but, you know, I just figured that would work. Anyway, so last week of this is how to connect four carbon or monofilament to your favorite braid. This is normally a technique or a knot that I tie when I'm trying to use it on my spinning rod, and this FG knot has probably changed most every professional angler has changed this. Now there is like a San Diego Jam. I know a couple of different other ones that guys use and I still use one other knot. I'm gonna talk about this in my beginner series. So if you haven't checked that one out, make sure to do that. Something that I use like when I'm not, now not tournament situations, but day in and day out, the best knot for me to tie hands down is the FG knot. So we're gonna dive into how to do that right now. Okay, so for tying the FG knot, what I have right here is my 10 pound suffix 832. Um, this is in ghost. I, I prefer a ghost line um, or, or a white line when I'm throwing a spinner rod. That's what I've used for a lot of years. I know guys use bright colors and stuff like that, but white works for me. Um, and really, I, I use two different lines on my spinning rod. I use this 10 pound. Um, and this is more for like the abrasion, uh, like it's a little bit stronger. Um, it casts well. I mean, if I'm using super finesse stuff, I use my eight pound uh, nano braid. And that's what works best. Both are, are made by suffix. Um, but the thing is, just talking about lines in general, that seems to work well for me. So, okay, without further ado, we're going to take this line and tie a fluorocarbon. Oops, sorry guys. So we're gonna tie fluorocarbon to a braid. And you can do this with heavy pound line and everything else. So the biggest thing with this whole deal, okay, is having tension on your braid. So I'm actually gonna to try to pull some tension. It's a little easier to do to grab when you have it on your rod. So that's what I tend to do. Let me slide this guy over. So tension on my braid. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to grab this this braid with my teeth or in my mouth. And my brody helped me a little bit on that too to make it a tension. So, so you have a tension, pretty dang, pretty dang tight. Then you take your, your fluorocarbon and you're basically making a weave is the whole deal. So as I go down through here, I'm gonna bring this over and you're gonna need all your hands. That's why you need it to be, there we go. Over, under, it's one, it's actually two. Four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Now I might need a little, give yourself enough line. I'm gonna do it one more time. Make sure to give yourself a lot enough excess line out here because you are wrapping around. One, two. So you want it to be a semi-tight line. You see it's not it's not completely tight. Because there has to be room for that fluorocarbon to wrap around the braid. So I'm locking them in. Now other people will say different things, but this is what's worked for me. So there's and what I'm doing is every single time it's a weave. You're going over, under, and on top, and then you're going over. It's the same deal. So you'll see as the knot, the knot is forming, I'm locking them in to make it a tight weave. Now guys will tell you certain ways to do it. I might be doing it wrong, but this is what has worked for me. And so, just letting y'all know. So basically you're gonna get up to about 22 wraps, okay? Now there's about 22. Now if you're using heavier pound test, if you're using heavier pound test, you're going to do less wraps, but the key is, is getting that knot really tight. Okay, now this is where things change a little bit, okay? So with this knot, what I do, again, like any knot, you're gonna cinch it because it's tied around itself. So what I'm gonna do is take my braid, 
and I'm gonna go one overhand around my braid and my fluorocarbon. You can sort of see both of them up here. I'm gonna tighten them down. So you're cinching that down. So that that is one of the most important parts of this knot. So now that I've got him tight, I'm gonna pull down on all of my tag ends to make sure everything's tight. That is a huge part for me on this knot, okay? And what's worked well. So after that first knot, you locking that knot, you're basically locking that knot in after that. And you can see it's pretty thin. I mean, it's it's a pretty thin knot. Um, then I will go back over with the with the braid and I'll go back over again over the braid and the floor. This is the main line and the tag end of the fluorocarbon. I'm actually grabbing your teeth, you need your teeth and everything sort of too. One, two, I'll do it like three times. So it'll be so it's a total of four times. Now guys go into saying I I've tried it, I've used this knot for two, three years, and the guy that actually taught me, told me to bring the full the braid and go back over it four times. I I don't think you need that, but that's what's worked for me, okay? So this is just the way I, I personally have done it. Then you got this knot. This is probably 20, I'm gonna say it's 26 wraps. You can go lesser than or more than. I've, I've even done it where it's like potentially even, you know, 35 wraps you you know it's basically just adding more length to it which you know can can hurt your casting ability but also get, it ends up making it to where it less chance of it going all the way through and you're and the cool thing about this knot is if it does slip you're gonna see it so we have our four wraps in there now we gotta cut let's see here i'm gonna pull on him one more time real good that's again this with any tying of of knots together um, or any knot, and for that matter, is cinching it down is is the key. Really pulling on him. So now we got all those knots together. Now there's two different ways of doing this. I'm gonna show you real quick here. There's all these different tagging. Sorry, y'all. There's two different ways of doing this, and this is sort of like I go back and forth on it. Scissors. Okay, so I always cut my fluorocarbon. Get him. Pretty, it's pretty tight. You don't need it to, you don't want it to cut, catch it all. And then I will cut my braid. There you go. There you go, right there. Now you're tight. Now this is this is the end to finish the knot off. One thing that I always do is I'll grab a little bit of super glue. This is like the Loctite super glue gel. It works fine for me, I just have it. And then I will actually put just a dab of super glue and I'll pull it up the line, up the braid. So that way it's sort of just one more thing to lock that knot in. And it also sort of, if there is any excess line, if you didn't cut it real tight, it'll actually keep that along that braid to where it makes it super low profile. I mean, that's the way I tie that knot. Now, I'm gonna show you one more thing. Let me tie it again real quick here. I'm gonna show you another way to sort of cinch it in. It should be good to go right here. Let me just give him a good tug. I mean, that's not going anywhere. That is, in, in my opinion, a lot of guys out there right now, the best knot you can potentially tie two lines together, especially on low, lighter line applications. It's the weave, you know, it's, you just got, it's the deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. I'm gonna retie this real again, one more time. Again, semi-slick. I have it in my mouth right now, as you see. You can't really see it, but Brody's helping me with this because it's a little bit tougher. Normally, I just use it on my, my deal. Again, remember, when you start, it's the weave. Let me get them up here. I'm gonna, I normally go up and go away from me and go underneath, come back over, boom, underneath, 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 underneath. Again, here we go, I'm gonna do this one more time. Again, semi, semi, like, you want it tight, but you don't want it too tight. Again, one, four, that's actually six, because I'm wrapping it. It's eight, that is 
10. I'm gonna do 12 on this one. Just, gonna, just as an experiment. Just sort of, so I'm gonna use this, cut him down a little bit. Again, bring my braid over the two. Right there. Sorry, y'all. Braid. That's the most important. Cinch him down, lock him in. Lock that guy in. One more. Okay. So we have our knot tie. This is actually 12 wraps, I believe. It's a lot smaller than our last knot, which you can go that small. It's just really an experience. It all depends on what you personally feel like you feel better. I like a little bit longer knot, about 20 wraps, 22 wraps is what I've personally worked with. And it's like, when I go one, two, that's one, just two wraps, you know? So, so what I'm gonna do, this is the thing. This is where the, the biggest issue with this knot, <clears throat> the biggest issue with this knot is the fact that it ends up unraveling and, and your, your locking point, your point where I tie it right here, at the very tip of it, it does not, sometimes it'll unravel. And you'll see it sort of start to unravel on down down through there. So the reason why I like it a little longer is for some reason, if it ever does that, which it, I, these, like the super glue and this one other method that I use um, that works well for me um, to lock it in place, if it ever does that, the longer the knot is, the more trial and more error, room for error you have. And meaning what I mean by that is, you'll have more room for those things to unravel. They won't unravel this like constantly, like quickly, like it'll be like a wrap, 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 and you'll see it visually with your eyes and you'll know like, hey, that's, it's a failed knot. So the other way I lock this in place, I already locked him down. I will cut the fluorocarbon down to as close as I can again. But then I will take, I'll cut this guy off a little bit, like right there, and that's the tag end of the braid. So now this is where you wanna be careful. Now you can sort of see that tag in. Then I'll take a lighter and I'll just slowly bring him down. I'm protecting the knot with my finger now basically so it doesn't get, so I have between two of my fingers. And then that, if I get it all the way down, I'll get it down there where it has a little burr right there. And ultimately what that does is it makes it to where it won't, it doesn't want to come unraveled. Um, so, okay, so that's it. FG knot, uh, I told you guys a few different ways to look at it. You got, you got the super glue, you have the way of actually with the lighter, you're gonna have a better chance of burning yourself with the lighter over the super glue. That's why I picked the super glue. I've cinched my fingers a couple times, but I've learned a little bit better. So two options, same knot, definitely a bad dude. All right, that's it. We went through this series. Hopefully you all have enjoyed this series. If you have, drop a comment below. Make sure to give me a thumbs up. We really appreciate all the support you guys show day in and day out. And if I forgot a knot that you think I need to add to this series or just learn for myself, I'm always trying to learn. Okay, this is, you You can never learn enough about basking. There's so much to learn. It's always changing. And so I, every time I go out fishing, I learn something. So drop a comment below. If I'm missing a knot that I need to learn and, and try out, drop it below. Thank you all so much for watching. See y'all next time.